Nan Catray's Ives has some thoughts on Tesla ahead of their earnings on Tuesday. Now, I'm not one to encourage irresponsible behaviour, but I do have a drinking game. Take a shot of AG1 every time Dan says any of his classic catchphrases, including Green Tidal Wave, Nightmare on Elm Street, Cinderella Story, Make or Break, Disaster, Adult in the Room, and so on. Security's Dan Ives is here at Post 9. We know that Tuesday is going to be a big day. You say the clock has struck midnight. And the line that stuck out to me, uh, trading in the... All right, that was the first catchphrase. Clock has struck midnight. Drink up, everyone. <sighs> Let's continue. Model 2 for Robo would be a tragic gamble, in your opinion. I, I think it would be a gamble that could maybe even define the future of Tesla in the next three to five years. And I think right now the big nervousness is Model 2. That's a key part of the growth. That's 50 to 60 percent of the incremental growth in the next two or three years. Robo taxis, autonomous, that's not for another five to six years. And I so just to be clear, what Dan is suggesting here is Tesla over the next sort of half decade, let's say, is just a car company. Therefore, whatever may happen with autonomy, it's half a decade or more into the future. Therefore, if Tesla doesn't start mass producing a more affordable electric vehicle to sell to consumers in the next five years, they're fucked because robotaxis won't happen for at least another five years. For what it's worth, I still believe we are on the cusp of autonomy. When I first published my Tesla valuation model back in 2021, my original estimate was first Tesla robotaxis late 2024. Just to guess, if you guys want to see my updated estimates here, you can see my latest Tesla valuation model exclusively on Patreon by joining at the investor level and above. Check the link in the pinned comment. But spoiler alert, my bull case, keyword bull case, still remains. First Robo Taxi 2024. Now, it's obviously impossible to know the exact timing around this, but I suspect we will look back five years from now when Dan thinks Robo Taxis might just be starting to happen and they'll have well and truly already happened. I wonder if Dan and other analysts really missed a trick, thinking autonomy was not just around the corner. It is impossible to know, but I'm unsure what gives Dan the impression that we're at least half a decade away. Judging by Tesla's own actions, not their words, their actions, especially with the Robotaxi unveil in August, I think it's fair to say that Tesla themselves strongly disagree with Dan's assessment that Robotaxis aren't happening for at least half a decade. I'd say, look, we've seen over the last decade, we've been through a lot of white knuckle moments from Musk and Tesla. White knuckle, another shot. <sighs> this is up there. And this has really been a Cinderella story. They <laughs> he, he, he actually, oh shit, that's three already. Make sure it's AG1, folks, otherwise you're gonna end up on the floor. And in the near term, has really turned into a nightmare on Elm Street. Bro, <laughs> you, you couldn't have, I mean, that was pretty perfect. I haven't watched this yet, but I've got a pretty decent feeling, at least if he talks about the earnings call, that we're going to hear adult in the room at some point, right? Seems to be one of his common discussions when referring to the fact that Dan and his colleagues are babies and need Elon Musk and Tesla to spoon feed them numbers. He, it all starts next Tuesday. Needs to control the narrative because if there's no adult in the room... Bro! This might be peak calling it. I just... Bro. How did I know? Look, in fairness, I say the same shit every day too. If somebody was predicting what I was going to say, you'd be able to do it. But, oh, dude, that was just too easy. Now, I can see where Dan's going with this. I think it's incredibly insulting to Musk and the team at Tesla to suggest that there hasn't been an adult in the room. But what Dan's really getting at here is, wah, wah, we folks on Wall Street are all big fucking babies and we need somebody to hold our hand and coddle us and pat us on the head and go, there, there, honey, everything's okay. Don't be scared. Daddy's here. Everything's going to be fine. Here are some numbers to put in your spreadsheet. Don't worry. As I've said many times in the past, hope is not a strategy. But here's what I hope happens. I hope that Musk directly trolls the Wall Street dimwits. Says, you guys can think for your fucking selves. I'm not telling you shit. P.S. Interest rates are through the roof. There's uncertainty about this. We don't know about that. Consumer confidence is down. Could be the end of the world. We might bleed money for a few quarters, even a year or two. And sends them into a fucking tailspin of panic. Causes them to melt into an emotional puddle. To panic out of the stock. That's what I would like to see. Again, that's what I hope happens, because while many folks are desperate for Big Daddy Elon to coddle them, I'm looking into the future, seeing what Tesla's built with FSD, the huge revolution with end-to-end -end video training with V12, seeing what's happening here, seeing the rollout, seeing the data, literal data about the data of FSD, V12, the rate of data collection, the rate of improvement, its capabilities, looking at the global landscape, seeing Tesla printing more money than anyone else with greater scale, better technology, lots of wiggle room, Compelling products, the world's best-selling vehicle last year, and obviously this year as well, plus the Cybertruck capturing everyone's attention, huge growth in the energy business, which is printing money, an unassailable lead with autonomy, 
making big steps with the humanoid robot, looking at the huge amount of compute that Tesla has for trading AI and licking my fucking lips. I cannot believe as I record this, Tesla's market cap now is well under half a trillion dollars. I'm licking my lips, bro. I absolutely would not have guessed this would happen. Then again, from 2014 to 2019, when Tesla stock went nowhere and was actually down about 25%, for more than half a decade, I wouldn't have expected that to happen, but it did. So I'm kind of not surprised that we're seeing round two. But if I had to guess, I would have guessed I'd be paying about three times what I am for Tesla stock now, as I'm actually paying, meaning my money is going a lot fucking further. We could have the perfect storm in terms of this earnings call. If everyone on Wall Street really wants big bad daddy Elon to hold them and coddle them and cuddle them and pat them on the head and say everything's going to be fine. If they don't get what they want, this could be utterly amazing. There could be darker days ahead. So if, if, if he really does say, we're, we're, we're going to play this long game and it's going to come at the expense of the two, you would re-rate? That would be, if that happened, it would be a disaster of epic proportions. Because in the near term, and you've seen others. In the near term. Keywords there, near term. P.S. I'm praying to the flying spaghetti monster for a disaster in the near term. Bring it on throwing the white towel because of the fears of that and because of some of the stuff that's reported, that would really put a massive black hole or gap in the growth for the next few years. And if you look at the last sort of 2015, 2018, there were levers that Musk could pull and ultimately did pull. And that's why it's, you know, you've seen the, the history. But this for the, I'd say for the first time in five, six years, long-term Tesla bulls are really calling, feels like they're about to hit the elevator if they don't hear what they want on Tuesday. Why are analysts like you and investors so downbeat on the prospect of the robo-taxi future? The answer would be because we have absolutely zero understanding at all. And I mean, I don't mean to be derogatory, I'm just stating the facts here. No, no idea what Tesla has created, how they've created what they've created, what a neural net is. They don't understand computer vision. They can't map an understanding of this because they don't have it onto what Tesla's done so instead, they see a software package that a few people add to their vehicle that can help a little bit, especially on highways, the end. <laughs> this is the actual truth. They just don't get it. They're reliant upon other opinions from other people as opposed to having their own understanding. You want to actually understand what's going on, go down the rabbit hole, spend the hours, tens of hours, hundreds of hours, maybe even a thousand plus hours trying to understand what's going on. I mean, a good starting point would be to listen to all the conversations with James Daumer out on the web, mostly with Dave Lee and some others. Okay, James gets it, and he has a very, very clear way of articulating what's going on. In fact, speaking of James Dowmer, following some discussion on X, Matt Smith chimed in with this, I think 80% or more of the people, even in the Tesla community, don't actually understand the economics and strategy of the robotaxi. James Dowmer, greater than 99%. Now, James does not say this to be obnoxious. I mean, got to be the least fucking obnoxious guy on the planet, right? Unlike this guy. But even in this case, I'm not trying to be obnoxious. I'm just pointing out the facts. They just don't fucking get it. I mean, if these people understood what was happening and the difference between what Tesla's developed, they're in a league of their own. They do not have anyone even close to them in terms of autonomy. And they have an unassailable data lead. They've got the fleet, six plus million vehicles on roads collecting data, the flywheel. You ain't catching them. We're so close. That is the actual truth. As we heard earlier from Dan, he believes we're five plus years away. So let's see how he answers this response. Basically, why are you so skeptical about robotaxis? I don't get it. Bullish on robotaxis, bullish on autonomy. The problem is, this would be like Cook on, you know, on May 2nd, coming out and being like, okay, iPhone 15. Now look, we're not gonna have anything till iPhone 21, but trust us, <laughs> thanks for being on the conference call. So that's the problem, is that we're bullish. It's always worked for him before. Exactly, and I think now, the difference is you need a refresh. Competition come from all angles. Game of Thrones that we're seeing in China. Competition coming from all angles? No, coming all over themselves. He must be referring to electric vehicles, right? He can't be referring to competition in terms of autonomy. Uh, oh wait, Game of Thrones, there's another shot we must take. And the credibility for Musk has definitely been questioned because the last two conference calls we've talked about on the show, those have been train wreck horror shows. According to uh, the Wall Street Derps, Elon didn't give us specific numbers, therefore it's a trade wreck. I don't know what to put in my spreadsheet now. No adult in the room. So this, it all comes down to clock struck midnight. Tuesday night, adult in the room needs to step up, navigate the story, and that's why we call it a fork in the road moment. We are still bullish on the long-term Tesla story, 
but this is a Category 5 storm. And the pilot on the plane can't be Ted Stryker. But what, what, what to you, there, there's a lot of just analogies and stuff there. Wow, she's even calling him out. But what do you, what do you want to hear? Because the China competition is not in Tesla's control. Yeah, you need to hear four things. One. Take notes, ladies and gentlemen. These are what Dan and potentially his colleagues hope to hear on the earnings call. And I can already guess and suggest that these are going to be things that I hope we do not hear. I'm still buying. And the cheaper, the better. What's the growth strategy in China? How are we going to reverse the trend that we're seeing in, in mainland China? Which is So uh, what trend are we reversing here, Dan? Just checking to understand what he's talking about here. Best-selling electric vehicles in China in 2023 for the whole fucking year. China, number one, Tesla Model Y. Um, does anyone know what he's talking about with this supposed trend in China that he would like to see... The strategy for reversing, I guess he wants Tesla to explain how they would would like to see the Model Y fall from the number one selling vehicle in China to number two, three, maybe out of the top 10 or uh, what? What? It's been, we'll call it 60, 70 percent of, of the growth, incremental growth story for Tesla. How do they do that? Those cars are cheaper. They're nice. I, I saw them on the streets. I tested them. How, how are they going to reverse that kind of growth well, trend? Hold. Uh, so again, on screen, I just want to make sure everyone's understanding what the fuck they're actually talking about right now, because the narrative seems to imply something that doesn't align with the reality. All prices, whole margins, we're going to basically bet on our brand, no different than what Apple has done, and I think many others, including Microsoft, depending on the, on the products. But give the strategy there, what are the targets, and, and Sarah, they have to give guidance. What's the targets on growth, realistically? What do margins look like? Where does it trough out at? AI yes, please give us numbers to put in our spreadsheet so we don't have to think for ourselves and analyze because we're not analysts. <laughs> Wait, uh, what? AI, Musk, the 25% threat, recommit, keeping AI within Tesla, showing FSD, showing autonomy. That's been the problem here is that if you had an adult in the room to navigate, the stock, I think 30% of the sell-off here has really been must-driven, mm, mm. but it all comes down to, like, you could talk to talk, guy walk to walk. I'm having a hard time understanding what the fuck Dan is talking about here. Did he not just say and suggest that Tesla, or actually Elon, needs to walk the walk? That was a quote, not talk to talk. So, for example, to do things and execute would be walking the walk. And saying things like, oh, you're scared, Antelus, don't worry, here's a number to put in your spreadsheet. That would be talk, right? Is this guy confused? Does what he really mean? Is, is he trying to say he would prefer Tesla to talk the talk and not walk the walk? Because they are walking the walk. And Dan's here saying, we need Tesla and Elon to talk more and tell us the things that they're going to do. Instead of actually doing the things, just tell us what you're going to do so we can put it in our spreadsheet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, this is a really good insight. If this is how many folks on Wall Street are thinking, I really do pray to the flying spaghetti monster that they don't get what they want. While they're crying, I will be buying. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 has given me a massive, meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. It's an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, you can get yourself a one-year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus. Ate like trash. Rarely exercised. Used alcohol as a stress crutch. Cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass. Got me back to the gym. Motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a fuck ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, 
and intestinal waste management. <laughs> uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. It's something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family. And of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke or sleep healthy. So I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy, wondering, what the f really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the f Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud. But constantly... I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month, and if it doesn't work... Get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1, and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, or click the link at the pinned comment, and please, let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks' time. And now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the link at the pinned comment, see you over on Twitter and or Patreon, and don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.